Hmm. This is where we left off. We can find out where the shot came from, find out where Ruby is. Let's see, we have to find the Sunday friend who's also on that side of the map. We have to tell the ravers that also over there. Okay. So we want to be on that side of the map for sure. First, let's take a little look. Uh, no, I guess our room's up top. The Sunday friend should be oh, somewhere up in this corner, I think. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What is this? Can we get up there? Have we been there already? It looked like there was something we could interact with. Oh, Sunday friend, we found him. As you approach, the man turns and greets you with a polite wave. Hello. How are you, sir? Ah, super. It's the officer. I was not expecting to run into you again, but things have a funny way of turning out, no? Indeed. What brings you down to the scenic Martinez coast? What are you doing out here? Hmm. Well, that's très simple. I was visiting the fishing village just north of here. They have applied for a series of microloans to revitalize the old market. And, well, I wish to see the situation firsthand. Okay. And then, well... I had some extra time on my hands, so I decided to stroll down here. It's quite peaceful, isn't it? Microloans. Yeah, did you know there was a mass execution right over there? Really? Here? How can you be sure? I can reconstruct things. Ah, a very useful gift for a police detective, I'm sure. Fascinating how much history is contained right here. If only one knows where to look for it. Indeed. Are you just going to let him get away with these generalities and euphemisms? Yeah, I think so. Well said. Let us just be grateful that we don't live mm. in such fascinating time. Indeed. Ah bon? I'm all ears, officer. I want to form a committee, dude. My friend, if it's la responsabilité you're after, I have good news for you. There's no need to form such a committee, because it already exists. Is that right? God, of course it does. These moral intern types. The Committee de Responsabilité de Revachol, it acts as a sort of clearinghouse for coalition activities. To put it simply, they are the ultimate arbiters of la responsabilité in this part of the world. I think I unplugged my second monitor over here. Yes, this is just the sort of reasonable authority you're looking for. I would offer to connect you with the committee mm. myself, but alas, I am not actually in Martinez. Hmm. Okay. What? Where is he then? He's speaking figuratively. He means 
He's not in Martinez in his official capacity. Oh, so he's not actually out here, but, you know, asking about micro wounds. Yeah, where are you then? Why, officially, I am still in La Delta, preparing for an upcoming conference on fuel oil derivatives. I'm only in Martinez in an unofficial capacity. That's why it would be extremely irregular, or potentially even inappropriate for me to intercede with the committee concerning a district I'm not officially in. How do I contact them? Well, under ordinary circumstances, the committee contacts you. No. Oh. In other words, the committee only knows what it wants to know. But if you mm. have information of a vital interest, they might be willing to entertain an exception. In which case, I would advise you to contact them via Coalition Worship Archer. Why do I need to go through Archer to speak to the... Hmm. You see, in addition to being an airborne artillery platform, Coalition Warship Archer is also the linchpin of the Coalition's surveillance and communications infrastructure in Revachol. It's watching us? And listening. It has the most objective vantage point in the entire city. Not to mention a vast array of radio, photographic, and meteorological monitoring instruments. That's interesting. I find it a great comfort to know there are benevolent powers watching over all, in strict accordance with the Wayfarer Act and the Bristol Muna Convention. If they're watching things that are happening, like... Why don't they intervene when stuff goes down? The Bristol Moon Conventions are a series of international agreements governing the treatment of military personnel and civilians in theaters of war, as well as occupied territories. In practice, they are more talked about than observed. So how do I get in touch with this warship? Hmm, this is quite the problem. Very tricky. Of course, the Archer has orders to fire on any unidentified aerostatics that might approach it. So it might be safer to get in touch from the ground. But yeah, okay. But in that case, you would require a radio transmitter capable of broadcasting on coalition frequencies. And that kind of technology naturally isn't typically available for non-coalition use. Yes, it is a bit of a conundrum. I suppose there might be some way to circuit bend your way onto those frequencies. I am a circuit but bender. You'd have to be one of those techno tinkerers to do it. Do you know any? Unfortunately not. No. I don't have the pleasure. I am merely a representative of the coalition government. Not very well versed in technology. Sounds like something that programmer we met in the church might be able to help with. Yeah, probably. Let me just say that I have complete confidence in the RCM. I'm sure yeah, always yeah. my pleasure to be of assistance to the RCM. Indeed, you've not been very helpful, my dude. What is this, though? I can look at a hiding place. Could the instigator be inside? Um, hmm. I don't think so. This was not one of the uh, potential shooting bots that we identified. What the hell are you guys doing out here still? Hello, hello. What can I do for you, officer? Um, have you seen one with red hair? I'm afraid not, officer. I've been busy digging around in the reeds for days, looking for signs of insect activity. I'm less interested in mammalian concerns to be put. The lieutenant takes a short note in his notebook, then gestures for you to proceed. Did you know Gary had that armor? Hell no. I had no idea. And I'm still cross with him, to be honest. It's not like him. He's got his quirks, but dishonesty, disloyalty are not one of them. Mm. Thanks. Uh, Lena does seem eager for your return. And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish with these traps. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. Come on, Morale. Okay. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. 
Sure. Come on, she wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. Yeah, I didn't know the phasmid was so important to her. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting, on record. One of only 40 century, and it's hers. She's seen it? Yeah, she didn't tell us that. Yes, that's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story okay. to tell, not mine. <laughs> I will have to bring that up. Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. I can't abandon course now. You could just visit her, warm up, and then come back to check the traps, right? No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the phasmid were to starve while we were sipping tea at the hostel? Fair enough. He's dead set on this. Hmm. I could go for some trap setting. Yeah, we could. We didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. Ooh, boy. Um, yeah, cryptozoology and detective work, they're similar. Yes, indeed. Both require a great deal of research, attention to detail, and, above all, persistence. Where are the traps? There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula, by the boathouses there. It's very near. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there, on your way to the old radio tower, okay. after the church. The third is set near the canal, where you crossed, by a concrete slab. A big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them... You should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still, better safe and stupid. Then sorry. Indeed. That seems like a lot. Do we really have time for this extracurricular venture? Yeah, maybe our suspect will be hiding near the traps. I have a feeling the only people foolish enough to spend their time skulking among the reeds are these poor fools and us. But fine, it's not like we are drowning in leads. What do I do if I find the phasmid in a trap? Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. He's not comfortable with the possibility that you'll claim the find, but he's lying about this even to himself. What if I encounter it in the wild? That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. What? It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the side of you. It's quite potent. Will last you about a week. Awesome. Lit on me thick. Sweet. I hope you're not buying this. He dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. It is precious. It's just axe body a spray. Single dose cost me fifty real to develop. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. Okay. Right. Which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Finally! Someone's talking sense. Indeed. Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. Nah. We'll be Actually, let's see if Gary has anything new. Hello again. Nah. Okay, so down to the south here, there's another trap next to these little houses. Oh, right here. What's in these traps? There's a trap in the reeds at your feet. Looks like the same one you saw Morel set before. Same mesh, same wiring. Behind you, the ruins of a residential building rise over the reeds, shielding them from the wind. The locusts are crawling around in the trap, confused but uneaten. 
You see no carnivorous reed phasmid gorging on them. Okay. Big surprise. Anyway, one down, three to go. Yeah, I was hoping it would be in the no, first one. No, you weren't. Uh oh. Well, okay. <laughs> I guess I wasn't. Let's go check the one near the canal. And we'll go do everything that's up, up north. So let's see, there's a big concrete slab, he said? Where... Where is it? So this is... Hmm. Near the canal. Oh, up here. Maybe. Oh, where's that trap? Oh, it's right here. It's not going to be in this one either. Do I have to check these every day, I wonder? A familiar apparatus lies among the reeds. Another one of Morel's traps, weighed down by stones to keep it in place. Let's look around. The reeds bend forlornly toward the sand. You see slabs of concrete north. In the east, the city center hums to you. The constant, distant song, louder on this part of the coast, nearer somehow. Hmm. And there's that cold again. Always the cold. This trap is also full of panicked locusts. No sign right. of any cryptozoological beast inside. Another empty trap. The next one's going to be the... Oh, yeah, it's for the cardio. Let's go with that. Always up for a good jug. Indeed. Otherwise, would I still be on this case with you? Oh, hush, Ken. Of course you would. I'm great company. Think of how bored you'd be if you weren't with me, Ken. Oh, both got. Yes, let's see. What are we doing? What are we doing? Oh, let's ask about Ruby. Before we head out. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Can you wash this jacket for me? I can wash it for you. Oh. But it's going to take about a half an hour. Think you can stay put for that long? Sure. Hell yeah. I could use a breather. It's been another track and field day. Sure. Well, hand it over then, and I'll see what I can do. Merci. I'm proud of this one. It's pretty nice underneath all that field. I hope you'll have an easier life in your hands. Awesome. Have you seen a red-haired woman? Nay, I haven't seen anyone lately. Oh. Uh, because she's blind. Yeah. Which you seem to have forgotten. Do you know who I'm talking about? This though? is my little cinder block town. I know what goes on around here. Well, what? She's being evasive. She knows something. There was a murder in Matthew. Spill the beans, lady. She might be a suspect. We would appreciate your help. Would you now? I know how this world works. And it doesn't work when people tell on each other. Hmm. This... Is like when that man locked himself in the woodshed. We just need to help her come out. No, it's not like that man. With him, we called you. Right now, you just arrive by yourself, like a raven plucking at the window glass. Hmm. There's not much to tell. People come and go. Now, go. was there something else? Nah. I see, ma'am. I hope you don't mind if we look around anyway. You should you look around your shack. 
Maybe she's rented it out to others too. Good idea, logic. Let's talk to uh this chick though. Ways are beginning to die down. Look at those little bastards. Simmer down. Simmer down, bastards. Why does she care about the waves so much? What's with you in those waves? What is it with waves and fishermen? We need to be out there with them. Fishing, making a living. So I asked them to accommodate me. But until okay. that happens, I can try to assist you the best I can. So what will it be, officer? I'm looking for uh for someone. Oh? Who? A suspect. Okay. When did this person stay here? Very recently. Oh. I've been out on the sea for most of the past week. Uh, the weather's been good for fishing, so I usually start at four in the morning. Really? Yes, that's the optimal time. Got to make the most of the calm. I've been sleeping like a corpse after. The sea really takes its toll. Now right. I'm just waiting for the wind to settle to get out there again. Sorry I couldn't help you out. Maybe I can help you find someone else. Well, nah. how can I assist you? Okay, let's look around our shack. Maybe that'll, there'll be a clue in it. What is this? What is this? As you look at the floorboards in this corner of the shack, it's clear one of them isn't quite level with the others. The edge of a floorboard next mm. to it looks scratched. Interesting. Move it. Hollow space underneath the floorboards is dark and damp. You can barely make out the mixture of sand and sawdust below. What's in it? Nothing particular catches your eye. Looks like more reeds. There might be something hidden inside the sand, though. Let's search. You stick your hand in and start combing through the sand. Dry, not like outside. Fine dust. And then, something hard wrapped in paper. What is A it? A small cylindrical object. You pull it out. A bullet. A 9 millimeter bullet, to be exact. Fit for all muzzle loaders of that caliber. Like your own Villiers pistol. So For not example, like the murder weapon. The floorboard isn't interested. Maybe the washerwoman is. You have enough to confront her with. Sure. It's extra ammunition. She's locked and loaded. Ready to fight some cops. No, she isn't. It's a bullet. Let's talk to her. Hey, lady. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Why was this bullet in there? Damn that girl. And without anger, a long and harsh life has taught her not to buckle under pressure. Hmm. A bullet? Yeah, a bullet. You didn't put it there, did you? She did. Gone and hid things in there? She's usually a good tenant, and not a stupid one either. When did you rent the room to her? Yes, I let my room to that ruby girl. As I've done before when she's been in trouble or just looking for solitude. I've made it clear, we welcome all kinds of people here. When? She came last Friday, left on Monday in a hurry. What has she gotten herself into, that girl? I'm not sure. That's for the police to find out. Right there. Please answer each question to the best of your ability. I'm sure we have a few. She left on Monday? Yes, early with the dogs, around 8 o'clock, I think. She probably heard the Lieutenant's Kanema drive by, and it woke her up, just like it did you. Oh, maybe. Yes. That is a downside of having a 130 kilowatt engine. It lets the bad guys know when you are coming. Hey, did you have any radio stuff? Not that I knew of. 
though she was into nice music. She once showed me a few mixtape milieu she'd made. Milieus. Although I guess she was pretty handy with the mechanical and technical stuff. Even fix the heater in the shack. You should be thankful for that. I am, I am. What's she like? She's good company. Knows how to talk to an old woman. At my age, you don't get a lot of quality conversation. So I really appreciate that about her. Did she talk to you much during her last day? No, she was mostly silent no. this time. Kept to herself. How so? She tried not to let it show. But I could tell she hadn't come to fish. Usually she likes to cast a few lines. But this time she mostly stayed in her room. Was the room exactly as she left it? I cleaned it. Like I always do. What else was there? No. The truth, sire. What do you think she left a bullet? How would I know? She's a gruff one, but not violent. She doesn't go around toting a gun. Where'd she go? I don't know. Further up the coast. She tried to leave quietly, but the hinges on that door screeched like a cat in heat. Woke me up. I heard her rushing in those heavy boots, heading up north. It's a peninsula. Mm. She might be trapped. What's up? You'll never find her, you know. She knows the coast like the back of her hand. You only just arrived. Does she have voices, though, that tell her things? I don't think so. I wouldn't worry about that, ma'am. We are persistent. Yeah, for the place we go. Are you sure you would rather stay here? Get a nice cozy fire going in the heater? Seems like a better idea to me. Maybe. A failed electric mural. You feel like you should go look at it again. Step closer this time. One okay. thing, officer. That's strange. If you do find her, please go easy on her. Yeah, she's no a problem. good girl. Whatever she's gotten herself mixed up in. Yeah, uh, that makes sense being that this wasn't even the type of bullet. Hmm. Oh yeah, let's look at that jacket. Okay, that's pretty cool. I don't think that we'll be wearing it. Uh, it's my current jacket. Yeah, let's just keep our current jacket. Uh, let's tell the nightclub folks what's going on, and we'll go look at that mural. Hardcore! Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? Um, here to talk about the church. Yes? What's the deal? Yeah, if you let this chick use your speakers, you guys can sup your nightclub. We are grateful, Copman. You're an augury of a new era of anodic dance music. Cool. That's fine. We can manage. And you're still sure about keeping our little side business, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Fine. We can make do. It's going to take us a bit to move our stuff inside. A couple of hours, maybe. Come check back later. Let's get moving. Sure thing. Awesome.
Oh, is it just passing a few hours or no? Okay. Okay, so they just vanish. And I guess they will reappear at some point in the church. That's fine. What is this? What is this? A sewer? The light vanishes inside the concrete Oh yeah, slit. I forgot there's a sewer. The structure goes deep under the earth. Kim, any idea what's down there? No idea. Could be connected to one of the buildings around here. And Ruby's down there. We might find her down somewhere. There's an old storm drain system beneath Martinez that's mostly collapsed. Okay. Revachal sewage system has been built and rebuilt four or five times now. In conclusion, she could be under any building. But not in there. I hope not. I hope she is. So, let's go look at that mural again because our voices told us, hey, that's a pretty good idea, I think. Step real close to it. You see a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years, but you can still make out Feld Electrical R&D, a slogan used to intertwine with the loops a long time ago. Now, only a shadow of peeled letters remains. That it closer. says, tomorrow is just a whisper away. Above the mural, a collapsed roof, broken windows set in walls that are cracking and will soon also fall, and the coastal breeze rustling and sighing in the remains of the edifice. Fell electrical. How ironic. All these dark rooms. Could Ruby be in there? She could. Or she could be in the identical room over there. Or in that boat shack. In that church tower, maybe. Why single out this one building? My shivers is not high enough. Death notification. What does death notification mean? Okay, let's get our shivers up. Our shiver me timbers. The once bright mural towers. Still pretty hard. Let's see. Oh, we should have tried it and then increased and then tried it then increased and so on. Oh, well. Not doing this in the most uh, optimal way. So we'll have to change our bow tie and armor back. The once bright mural towers above you, saying, Feld Electrical R and D. Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Let's try it. Suddenly, all is quiet. There is no cold hand brushing against your forehead, no rustle in the reeds. The wind has died down. Or gone behind a corner, you only hear distant waves washing the coast. The ruin in front of you is silent as a tomb. Hmm. Trying to what talk trying to the to? wind, the city, whatever you thought would happen, did not. And now you're just standing there with your hands fallen to your side. Is trying to talk to the city something you've done before? It isn't. Is it in your secret repertoire? A trick for... How do we? I was really hoping she'd be in the village. <sighs> okay. She's probably north of the village, and this place is a peninsula. We've already talked to the cryptozoologists. Working with them might give us a good excuse to yeah. run around, give us some structure. And then there's the church. We've already searched that and can rule it out. I know it doesn't feel like progress, but exclusion is a step too. Anyway, we do it the old-fashioned way, sector by sector. Oh. 
Go over the whole peninsula. Ask the locals. Enter the places where we can enter first. Like okay, we did in okay. the village. Then, if we're desperate, we can look where we can't enter. Bunkers, tom drainage, this place. I'm sure it won't come to that. Sure. Walk the coast. The old boardwalk. The reeds. You can always come back here That's and true. talk to the wind again. Look where it already got you. Okay. Buckle up and raise your collar. This search is going to be wet and cold. You're wet and cold. Uh, how about you guys? Have you seen that? Hello again. I'm looking for a suspect. No, I'm afraid I can't help you with this one, officer. It's just a regular day off for me and Mikhail here. Hmm. So you haven't seen anyone around? No, I'm sorry. As I said, this is just a day off. We just arrived anyway. He's telling the truth. He hasn't seen anyone. Very well. I will believe my voices. Um, well, we'll have to come back to this side anyways, check that trap. So let's go up on the boardwalk. The boardwalk was a potential shooting area as well. So we can try and maybe check that out. Oh, let's see if we can dial another phone number. You pick up the handset. There's a tone. The machine is operable. Sure, let's dial a random number. Calling. Still calling. Again? Seriously? Someone with a masculine voice no. picks up. Hello, Gerard speaking. Hey there, Gerard. What's up? Hello, Gerard. Technically speaking, you're electricity. No, what you are is a surprise. Get his wife on the phone. Hey, Gerard, get your wife for me, will ya? Who, who is this? It's Harry. Just put her on. I don't like waiting. Who the fuck do you think you are talking to me like that? <laughs> okay, let's not, let's, hmm. Let's just hang up. We've caused enough problems with their relationship. We'll need to go further. Walk for bullet traces. I'm saying to check. So yeah, let's just keep going past the church. Ooh, I'd love to get in there. What, uh, what skill check was this again? An old door, worn by elements, guards the depot. The wind facing. has blown a sand dune in front of it. The oh. door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. Kim, do you think they could have used this to take the shot? From here to the whirling? I can't see how. The church is in the way. Hmm. hmm. Yeah, we're not good enough to get in there right now. Truck. Oh yes, no phasmid. 
This trap's not too hard to spot. Once you know what to look for, keeping it hidden has not been a priority for the cryptozoologist. The reeds sway in the coastal breeze. They seem to be waiting for something. The wind picks up here, near the cape's end, surrounding the narrow strip of land from three cardinal directions. It's cold for this time of year. Okay, let's check it. Nothing but locusts in this trap as well. Definitely no cryptozoological monstrosity. Well done. Empty us, all of them. One more of these and we are done. Yeah, you getting tired, Ken? No, no, I'm fine. I didn't mean to complain, it's just... Mm-hmm. Like this story. I just heard a really weird sound. I don't know what it was. Is there something here that would indicate a sniper used this place as a nest for taking the shot? Just some urban detritus, a bottle, and a dilapidated old comms tower. In the distance, you can hear the breakers roar. I don't see it, Lieutenant W. Freito. I don't see a person take a shot here and hit something there, in the whirling in Iraq. Let's look over the water. There, 1.2 kilometers over the cold water of the bay, blue from the distance and the air, you see the smallest rectangle, barely visible. A glowing light on the third floor of the whirling in rags. With binoculars, you would see a young woman's shape move behind the glass, her limbs long and slender, smoking, drinking, being happy and elated without you, because you're here, freezing in the wind. And what about the cigarette butts? Those? A smoking assailant who favors Tumutiri to Astra or Joanne? Cigarette butts are everywhere. This is a common brand for all men. Sure. Tiumotiri was a Revisholian colony on Ilmara. The Suzerentis population was mostly Ilmaran Ariapagites, up to 97%. The region was known for its tobacco export, hence the name. I want to know a lot more about this. Oh, you do? The butts you saw had a silhouette of a boy wearing a coffee hat, a tobacco picker. This boy is the Tiumotiri brand logo. Contemporary River Sholians prefer Yuan, a local blend from the Southern Islands, or Astra, a legendary cigarette from Grad. Tio Matiri is favored by older men who like its old-fashioned paper filter tips, insane amount of tar, and the sweet smells of colonialism and halva. Well, the sweet smell of colonialism. Sign me up. Uh, yeah, what about the con tower, Kim? It's not possible to climb that ladder. And even if it were, why? There's no platform up there to aim from. What about the campfire? To warm his hands before Did pulling the trigger? Is this like super snowing? Perhaps. But anyone could have made this. The coast is specked with fires this time of year. Truthfully, this seems like a very poor choice to take a 1.2 kilometer rifle shot from. Visibility is awful. There's water vapor everywhere. I think we can rule out... B double prime, was it? Yes, B double prime. It's my favorite B. Yeah, when did it get so snowy here? Maybe I'm just dumb and not understanding what the boardwalk is. Here, right? The 
this some tea. Let's go check the last, um, Phasmid trap. Oh, no, this way, this way. Mm -hmm. well, first let's... Is there any more north we can go? No. This is the last of the traps. The one Morel just set. Checking it over, he said, is just a technicality. Let's look around. The reeds by the abandoned campsite sway and tremble while the snow falls all around. The later it gets, the colder. Remnants of the camp can still be seen in the sand. The fire that's gone out. You feel strange Thanks. somehow. The trap feels light and silent as you pick it up. Are all Something the locusts gone? Something is different here. No locusts. No phasmid either. But still. Look closer. Well, the bait worked on something. This doesn't mean it was a reed monster, though. Unless you see one in there, I just see an empty trap. Hmm. The netting is a little untidy. Messier than the others. Like someone or something picked the trap up and shook it before dropping it back down on the ground. Yeah, what if some or something mess with it? Perhaps our cryptozoologists have competition in the form of an actual entomologist, or someone else is sabotaging them. I could present more theories, but then I would be taking this on as a case, which I'm not. What if it was the Phasmin? Right. Anyway, that's for the cryptozoologists to figure out now. We are not cryptozoologists. We are cops. A cold gust of air dries your sweaty face, and you look to the dark shadow the fell building in the distance, drawing you to it. What a strange sensation. Once this is done, should you try to ask again? Yes. Let us ask again. We're just going to have a skill point where we can throw that into shivers as well. The once bright mural towers above you saying fell electrical r and d tomorrow is just a whisper away what's up shivers a breeze like a quiet sigh Damn. moves over you the cool air breaks across you go to the children of the big sea go to the children of the big sea what the wind rushes away leaving you where you were Children on the rotting boards of the felled building. Officer, are you okay? It looked like we lost you for a second. The wind told me to okay. talk to children. When you're ready, officer. Let's let's go talk talk to children. Not that children. Oh, maybe the children like like play inside the buildings and the sewers and stuff and know how to get in there. What's up? The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other watches him do it. Is Lily your sister? Yes. Yes? Yes. Okay. Yes. Have you seen, uh, something strange happened? Um, we had bad words and said, um, I'm going trouble. Good job. Bad word. Bad, bad word. Bad words are bad. Don't say them, kids. It's a first step to a life of crime. We won't. We learned. Where'd you hear the bad words? We just heard funny voices. In your head? 
We thought the voices were funny. We said what they said, and then we got in trouble. But where did you hear them? Radio? What's that? We just heard them in our head. Uh-oh. Could it be? They're like me. Do their minds work in the same way? Like little bleeps and bloops of information? No. Just people talking real fast. What did you hear? Uh, it was like... It is time at last! My nasty speed reeks! A brother man is about to grow up. <laughs> what? A memory stirs. You've heard this quickfire patter before. DJ Flatchios, Big Boy Daniel Single is here. Buckle up, because this is the fastest trash that you're ever going to hear. What? Turn up the volume. Blow those speakers out. Now here's... No. Don't say bad words, stupid. Indeed. Why? What a splendid rendition these two rap scallions have offered us here today. Faultless memorization. Perchance they'll enjoy greatness as a double act in the performing arts. <clears throat> Indeed. A word when you're done. The boy draws a jagged rock across the ground. It leaves a white scratch. Hey, care, kids. What's up, Kim? Detective. About what the twins had to say. So, those voices they heard. Yes, of course, earlier, when you turned the radio on in his Kanema. Don't. Yeah, your radio was tuned into that. <sighs> he was clearly uncomfortable discussing it before. He still is. You have nothing to gain from pushing his buttons. I do, though. I can't explain how they heard it. I believe they heard something. And given the poverty of this part of town, I don't know how they could have heard the radio. However, weird as it is, the situation is not connected to the murder. This isn't our business. Mysteries are our business, Kim. Yes. Mysteries like who killed the hanged man are our business. Not this. Hmm. Besides... Maybe it was just a radio they overheard. They might not be old enough to know the difference. How would they have heard the voices? Yeah, Ruby had advanced radio know-how. The lieutenant shrugs. Let's at least rule out radios before continuing. Maybe the twins didn't know it was a radio they were hearing. Maybe. The washerwoman seems to know everything that happens here. Let's ask if she heard anything before moving on. No, I'll After talk you. to their sister first. Oh. Safe and warm. Hello, mister. Do you know anyone named Ruby? No, Luby. Ruh. Ruby. My mom tells me I'm a big girl, but she doesn't know that I can't say Earl. Or like, sometimes I can, but then oh, er, Uller. Kids. Interesting. Are you Lillian's daughter? Yeah. Little Lily. Do you know my mom? Yeah. That's nice. My mom is great. She's never angry or anything. Well, goodbye. Bye! Disgusting children. <laughs> so talk to the old woman. See if she's hearing voices too. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. Have what you, can I help you with? Have you heard the radio uh, in the last week? A radio? 
Ah, no. We play no radio here. There's one in the shack, but it's never used. I did how the twins could have heard Speed Freaks FM. Was that the nonsense we were spouting? Puh. No, I have no idea where they heard it. We've been in earshot all week and no radio. Are you sure no radio? These ears know every sound that belongs to this coast. I would know if I heard anything different. Interesting. Let's just get it out of the way as fast as we can. Contact dispatch from my kinema and ask them to connect you to the station. Maybe I'm ready right. when you are. Thank you, ma'am. Anything else? No, nothing else. Let's walk down here. Whoa, who are you? Joyce? I'll just keep the Cordelechi in the channel, if that's okay. It's too shallow near the pier. Oh. Hi, ma'am. And it's a jetty, by the way. Of course. Jetty. I prefer a good jetty to appear any day. Jet, jet, jetty. Jet, jet, jetty. Something about the way she says it makes you want to sing. Oh, jetty, oh, jetty. It's good to see you here, detectives. I only just arrived myself. Yeah. What brings you here, madame? Nothing, really. I've had my eye on this jetty for weeks now, so I decided to investigate it personally. This cluster of buildings isn't on any of the official maps, as far as I can tell. Interesting. That. And she's also keeping an eye on you. So how do you like it here? Hmm. How do I like it? Water drips down eaves of Eternite. The jetty below her feet creaks to the tune. The smell of salt and dog shit in the background. Oh. It's pornographically poor. The street has no name. All the men are dead or missing. And is that the carcass of a motor carriage over there? Oh yeah, that's mine. I'm surprised that woman hasn't put me to the sword yet. Maybe she will. You should ask your questions while you can. Dark eyes survey the coast leading up to Martinez. Dull grey metal rests in her scabbard. A sword. The wind is too loud for her to hear. Fortunately for you, madame, the RCM is on the scene. All right. Politics time. Let's react. Place is doomed either way. Maybe. Above you, there forms a quilt of alto cumulus clouds, twisting into each other. The wind tugs and stretches them over the bay. Their cloud shadows slide over the ruins of Revachol West. Wherever they pass, the temperature drops slightly, but perceptibly. Have I told you how they discovered this place? The fishing village? No, the Insel Indian, Isola. You have not. Well, your condition has left you no worse off than most of these people. The literacy rate is around 45% west of the river. 50 years of occupation have left these people in an oblivion of poverty. Oblivion. That's so me. I knew you would sympathize. Most Revacholians will never know what this place means. Our home. This island of matter. Or why they were ferried over in the first place. Remind me to tell you one day. For now, how can I assist you in this new location? Yeah, tell me now. Do we? Maybe? I hear you have singled out a suspect and are in pursuit. This is cause for cautious optimism. I would not want to delay you. Very well. Maybe there is something else I can assist you with not while right you're now. hot in pursuit. Yeah, 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 let's get hot in pursuit. Looks like I have to message someone. Uh, have you heard any weird radio stuff? 
The waves are beginning to die down. Look at those little bastards. Yes, no. Uh, what about the drunk guys? Tequila Sunset. I've seen a red haired woman. Can't really remember seeing any women after losing my keys. It's a touchy topic. He hasn't got laid in ages. Oh. He really has no idea who this ruby is, sire. You too, Tequila Sunset. You too, uh, idiot Doom Spiral. The legend! He's back. And firstly, I got smokes and piss and a little speed to spice things up. Smokes, piss, and speed. Oh. The system's been good to old Rosemary here, and I'm milking her like a bitch goat in the backyard. You see, friend, man makes his own luck, and I made mine real good. Got my hands on three bottles of liquor ex squeeze, sold Ooh. two to the fellows around it, and immediately invested the profit. Bought cigarettes, bought beer, even bought a bit of speed. And look at me now, I've got everyone on my hook. The hook? Where is it? I can't see it. Impressive. Mm hmm. Cook them and cook them, huh? You want to buy something? Let's keep it moving. Okay. And what about you? Don't call Abigail. Yeah, I'm not going to call Abigail. I've seen any women around you. Abigail? No. <laughs> Okay, okay. No calling Abigail. I got it. Now let's go up into the church before it gets too snowy. Looking real snowy. We're gonna have to stand on the boardwalk to trigger... ...visual calculus. Loving the snow, let's hmm. check the boardwalk. And we've walked pretty much everywhere over here, and there hasn't been any thought bubble. Yeah, no, let's go into the church. See how they're doing. I wonder if um, the nightclub guys will be in there yet. Actually, was there anything down here we can check? Whoa, what is... Coins? Sorry, I see me some spare change. I have to pick it up. Fifty nine cents. Heck yeah. Think how many prank phone calls we could make with that. So it looks like there's nothing this way. So yeah, let's go in the church.
Sweet, they are here. Where did that O come from? Yes, what is it? Um... Have you seen a suspicious woman? What? No, no one's suspicious around here. Except for you. She has not seen her, sire. It is true. Can you help me contact the Coalition Worship Archer? Do I look like someone who has time for side projects at this moment? Great. If you want her help, maybe you should help her first. Yeah, how's the project going? What? What did you say? How's the project going? I can't hear you! The music is too loud! The project! How's it going? Why not? There's that guy. I need him to plug a 3.5 cable into the auxiliary input so that I can route the audio signal through the mixer into the speakers. Why don't you just ask him? He doesn't listen to me. He only ever seems to care about hardcore and Yekokata. Yekokata. A place to be, apparently. Thanks. Maybe you can get through his magic rhymes. Let me know how it goes! Very well. Egghead, what's up? The clothes! True, hard, full, car! Hard car! Hard car to the internally coherent! All car! All right! Ye he furrows his brow as his very large head traces the sublime invisible movement of the music. In hard car! So hardcore. Is it though? It is. But is it? I mean, really? The question is, what is the question? No, but seriously, I'm a bit worried it isn't. The skin on your back is crawling. For a second, you can't even hear the music anymore. There is a hawthorn tree on Rue de Songe's Lane, right next to the canal. A hawthorn tree? Don't be alarmed. Everything is okay. He isn't actually worried. Everything is still super hardcore. What he probably means is, it could be even more so. Um, can you please route Suno's signal through your speakers? To the mega, yeah! I can route it through auxiliary. What kind of a cable does she use? 3.5 or 4.5? It's 3.5, no doubt about it. It's on the ground. Oh, she uses 3.5. Yeah. The auxiliary lining is 4.5 millimeter. These two don't mix. Oh no, we're going to be in this church forever. Indeed, Kim. Don't worry, I have an adapter for it right here. <laughs> right here. Hang on, this is a 4.5. We're all good, people! Whoa, thank God. Adapters noticeably degrade the sound quality. Great! Someone got through to him! Okay, let's get it all set up. Can we turn the music off, please? Yeah, just temporarily, Egghead. How about it? Everybody! Everybody! Don't panic! I'm going to turn off the on for just a sec for a special scheduled event. The Arno will be back, but we're doing something else for one moment. All right, <laughs> go tell her that Egghead is ready to rave to her tunes, and then I'll turn off the music. What do you think's wrong with the music? There's nothing wrong with it. I'm still in love with the hardcore. Sometimes I just feel like anodic music is in its infancy, you know? For example, Take this Arno van Eyck jam I've been pumping for the last months and will continue pumping for the rest of 51. Isn't something holding it back from being hyper? It's like it's only ultra. Hmm. I think it's super hardcore, but you're right. It's not hyper hardcore. If anything, it sounds a bit proto, like it's not fully formed yet. You might be a moribund alcoholic and a failed cop, but you are pretty certain a thing cannot be both proto and hardcore. 
It's Proto. Wow! Culture cop! I think you might be right. But how could it become hardcore then? I know it in my heart, but cannot think it in my head. If this is not hardcore, how could anything be? Hmm. Could anything make it harder core? What? Guys, there's something happening in his head. As your mind works, the beat recedes from your ears. You hear your own blood pulsing through your head, nourishing your thoughts with oxygen. The rhythm is familiar. Let's feel the movement of blood. The abstract shapes swelling in the foreground have done so in vain. This is a core matter. The answer in the double kick that moves the milliliters through your mind. The dark thud is the source of all rhythm. The inspiration behind mathematics. The hardcore. Think even harder. Oh yeah! He's doing it! But you're not. This is almost certainly a matter that surpasses the limits of reason. Dang. I know! So does mine! But there's something else that hasn't failed you. I'm the police. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh. The question is, what is the question? No! This is the answer! Hmm. You need something else. Something extra. Yeah! Oh, can my body tell me what's missing? No, that would be silly. Your body isn't for thinking. It's for robust, wholesome things. Things like discus, javelin, and 400 meter hurdles. Mmm, discus. Mmm, discus. Are you a thought reader? No nation, but trans nation! No war, but class war! Yeah! Why are there lungs on your belt buckle? Lungs are for love! Why would lungs be for love? When Dolores Day was anointed innocence, her lungs started glowing through her body. For the world loved her, and she loved it back. Yeah! Why wouldn't they be? Are the lungs not the place where you hold the breath of your soul? Sure, that makes perfect sense. Love! In a woman's lungs! Lonely as I am, I'm not afraid! This strange, damaged feeling grows on and on, because I've never loved someone like you before! A dopamine surge accompanies the words. It feels like electricity flowing down your scalp, dissipating into your neck feels good like a spark of life in that moribund sponge you call your body interesting all right here comes the night okay we'll get a little bit more extra after we solve the problem yes here. what is it okay now you can unmute your speakers okay but think you can ask him to turn the volume down a bit just in case maximum I guess not. Maximum is the only way! It's true. I know, I know it is, but could you please turn it down just this instance? Just this one time? Maximum is not the only way. It is the only okay? way. Pump it to the brick! Pump it to the hard master! There's no other way! Glue style! Glue style? <laughs> Glue style? Okay, there literally is no other way. The mixing desk is glued to maximum. Oh, okay, that's what that means. See? He pumped it to the hard master. It's hopeless. It's stuck on maximum. Of course it is. Yeah! Permanent enlightenment! Ray of sound! Yeah! Never mind then. Let's get on with our project. I'm going to unmute the speakers on account of five. Everyone ready? I'm ready. Egghead pumps his hand up in the air, waiting for the beat to drop. Born ready. Ready. 
I'm ready if you two are detectives. The lieutenant nods stoically. Not so stoically, his hand moves to the gun holster. Ready. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Mute disengaged. No wind outside. No waves. No floorboards creaking. Total continuous silence. This is unnatural. The woman looks around. In the silence, you see dust move on the floorboards. The driver of the speaker vibrates in the air and then stops. Plasterwork begins to crumble down the walls. In the silence, a low hum starts oh. creeping up your spine. It's a song inside you, not in the speakers, not in the room. A great bass sigh in the basement of your mind. Slowly, it builds until the air around you starts to vibrate. It what? will devour everything. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Guys, what's going on? This fragile world is about to break. It's getting louder. In the basins, the water looks like it's boiling. Hosiana, mother of Mega. He's peaking, the worst high he's ever been on. I've never heard anything this hardcore in my life. The beauty and the beat, the future of dance, planetary. No, egg, it's the window. Oh. In the corner of your eye, the lieutenant steps aside cautiously his eyes searching for a possible evacuation route. The window is going to come down. No, the roof! Um, hmm. Cracks appear on the stained glass window. Cracks run up the wooden pillars in the dark. Can you turn it off? Come down to us! Love! No, no, you don't want to come down to your egg. It's shaking the building's foundation. The floor twists. A great pulse arises in your flesh. That's it. I'm muting it. Oh, I want to dance with somebody. Oh, I want to feel the heat with somebody. Shit. It doesn't stop. A seal? Have you? Yes, I've turned it off. Oh. Andre, pull the compressor. The place is going to come down. Fuck. I can't shut it up. The signal's passed. It's not in here. It's... In the mixing desk now, building into a positive feedback loop. This is it. A great roar. The vault of the roof twists above you. Glass shatters somewhere near the door. It's coming down. Crap, when did we last save? Uh... Egg, it's in the desk. And then it stops. Totally and utterly. As if there never was a sound. Only your ears still ring from the shock. Everybody is staring at uh, Egghead. I feel bad having holding to pull it. a dangling cable in his hand. I really wanted to find out a what black happened if he... A uh, three-pin connector. I just let it keep going. Egg. I pulled the plug. It was getting too hardcore. No such thing. You did good, Egg. Most of the place seems to be intact. Fucking hell. Programmer lady, tell me you were recording that. Four years. Twenty-two people. Millions of reals. All that time, this is what we were up against. Just erased it. Suriswolf isn't gonna believe this. Yeah, but did you record it, though? It was dope. I think we can use it. Yes, Andre. I recorded it. Damn, I, I need to send some letters now. Thank you all for doing this. Eggman, you too. And you, officer. I don't know what we've discovered, but I know what it sounds like now. 
That's the start. What was that? It was mathematical information from the anomaly presented as a waveform. That's what it was technically. Theoretically, I have no idea. I've never even heard of anything like this. A voice seems muffled in the silent church. It's your ears adjusting after the exposure. You okay, Kim? It was very hard not to. I think you're right. There is something going on here. And you need to be very careful with it. I'm always careful. I promise, officer. We will not play it again. But maybe we will. Yes, our lead designer. And maybe some of the producers too. And some of the writers. If they're sober enough to open a transmission. They need to hear. They need to hear about this. Don't worry. I won't send the recording. Although I doubt they have the speakers to produce the frequency anyway. So what happens now? Stay here. I'm going to stay here with these lunatics. Send letters, maybe meet Sulisbov. Also devise further measurements. I want you to know that's totally chill with us. I don't care, but thank you anyway. That's the best she can manage for Andre. It's quite a lot in truth. For her, at least. Now, I have a theory to come up with. Some kind of preliminary explanation to all this. Or the letter will sound like that. I think it will sound like that regardless. Yes. And we have to get back to stabilizing Martinez. Instead of demolishing it with loud bass noise of unknown origins. Uh, let's get our logic up. It's logic time. Okay, as about as logical looking as we can get. Yes, what is it? Let's form a theory. You don't have to. You already have. Oh. A long time ago. How? These thoughts formed in you somewhere in a long forgotten discussion behind the kitchen table in the evening light. And a woman, she was there too. Her hair smelled of shampoo and she was smoking. Was it my ex-wife? Uh, Basuna, it's the origin point of the pale. What? The swallow. It's how it starts. It's baby pale. But, but pale isn't here. We're thousands of kilometers from the edge. No, we're only 20 meters. It's, it's in the ceiling. She looks up into the darkness under the nave, then back at you. You have her full, undivided attention. The lieutenant's, too. He takes his glasses off. Tell us a transition between the world and that. Then what is that? Beats me. It's nothing. No, it's less than nothing. No. It's less than nothing, the final recipe for reality. Imagine if all of this never was. Then the pail is... Curdling milk. But the milk, it clearly hasn't started curdling yet. We're here, and the pail is not. But it's gonna get bigger. It's just a baby right now. I understand. A theory of the pail where instead of an outer ocean, it metastasizes. Like a cancer or a mold, erupting in points inside the world. Yeah. According to this, how long? Sorry, start, baby. And information, causing data losses in the East Insel Indian front. Have you considered why it's born in a church, and also when or how it might start growing, or if it has other effects? In addition to sound and data. Who knows? I also have a question, since we are piling them on. How do you know this? I'm not doubting you. 
I'm simply curious as to how a detective of the RCM And form that church. The church formed around it. Of course! A pine wood sarcophagus. Or a... A containment facility of some kind. Built by the first settlers. Yeah. I have considered the same. The bad news is... There were seven pine wood churches built in the first decade of provincial settlement. Most of them were burnt down during the revolution. Or repurposed before. During the suzerain. I'm not saying all of them have one in them, but... Some of them might. A black grain hanging in the air. All the failed businesses in the doomed commercial area. You think the presence of that puncture has somehow influenced the outcome of events here? Maybe. Even, say, software development. Yeah, maybe we're True. Reaching. We never should have upgraded to Box 50. And the spec kept changing. And those damn heads. But still, the anomaly caused a massive data loss. So it had a part to play. It does something. But to answer your question, Kim, I've had this thought before. That's how I know. An amateur anthroponetic police officer. I'd like to say I've heard stranger things, but I'm not sure. This is a hell of a guess, however. Well worthy, I might add. Yes, it is very interesting. But I wouldn't say you know. This is a guess. One that's going to have to be proved by anthroponetic science. Already proved it in my head, though. She falls silent. The wind blows in through the hole in the stained glass window. Cold and moist. I'm going to leave that out. But the rest... Some of this I can use to start to explain this to the rest of the team. Maybe I'll sound mad, but... Man, you will certainly sound mad. <laughs> I agree. One more thing. Maybe a club for anodic music isn't the worst thing you can erect around this particular point in space. Perhaps not. Yeah! Once the light is on in the universe, it will never go out! Thank you, Egghead. Let's leave it at that, shall we? We have an anthroponetic detection to perform in this district. Uh, now, Suna, could you maybe help me contact this big warship? You're asking me to circuit bend onto a coalition radio frequencies. You want to know is it possible? Probably. But is it a good idea? I'm not so sure. Mm, but we need to form a committee. The main difficulty will be finding an antenna powerful enough to reach those frequencies. Unfortunately, you can't exactly buy mecha long wave antennas off the shelf. I know where there's some real fancy antennas. She's not joking. Even the RCM has to receive special approval from the Coalition to access that kind of equipment. No, yeah, there's that big tower at Land's End. I highly doubt it. That tower is barely able to transmit shortwave signals across the bay. To generate mecha low frequencies, we're going to need a much larger antenna. She has an idea, though. You can see the tiny signal lights firing inside her brain. Nice. I don't see any alternative. We're just going to have to build the antenna ourselves. Yeah, what do we have to do? We need metal. A lot of it. The taller the structure, the better. Something that is both prominent and easily accessible. If it's near a power source, even better. Do I know somewhere like this? Close your eyes. Mm, Unfold yes, your do. mental map of Martinez. It's morning. You're standing oh, on that the big statue before the whirling in rags. The wind pushes a piece of tear across the cracked tiles. From the north comes the malicious laughter of two children. Look at the roundabout. You turn around. The morning sun is blinding. You bring your hand to your brow, and a great shadow materializes before you. A towering beast, frozen in mid-air. Yeah. The dead king and his horse. It could work. It will work. We'll need an adequate power supply and a great quantity of cable. If we connect the cables to some of the stranded lorries, we could theoretically increase the antenna's wavelength exponentially. Whatever ambivalence she had about your project before, she's now fully engaged 
in solving this technical puzzle. Slutter thing. It's completely ridiculous, but I believe we could transform the entire roundabout into one solid fractal antenna. Heck yeah. A note of awe in her voice. She's shocked and pleased by her own audacity. That's a very big antenna. Yes. Very likely the largest private antenna in Revashol. I have plenty of cables and amplifiers on hand. The power supply, I will secure on my own. All we require now is the radio transceiver itself. Where do I get one? I cannot answer that for you, but I don't expect it to be that difficult. There's no shortage of radios around here. Okay. If you have real to spare, you might even be able to buy one. But it doesn't really matter where it comes from. So long as it works. And before you ask, no, you can't have the radio from Makinema. Yeah, what about the radio computers? Certainly. Though it requires a fair amount of technical finesse to remove them. Frankly, it's not worth the bother. Just find a regular radio. In the office near the harbor? That sounds like a perfectly adequate radio. Okay. Hey, you know what, Kim? I found an even better radio than your car radio. I highly doubt that. When I crank the volume on my Dino Wave, it's like you're in the front row at the National Concert Hall. Challenge accepted. There is no need to go out of your way to find a top shelf radio for this purpose. As long as it's functional, that is what counts. Alright. In the meantime, I will gather the rest of the materials. We will meet back here when you have it. Sure. Okay, let's get our normal clothes on. Uh, what else did we take off to... Are we wearing all of our gear now? Yeah. Uh, so... Let's see, what did I need? Was it a physical instrument to, um... Help Egghead make the beat harder core? I think it was. Have anything else that increases physical instrument? I don't think that we do actually. Um, hmm. Oh well. Let's try it. Delarian ship! Vibrations thump through your blue soul. My blue soul. The music sounds much better in the church. Does it really? A hawthorn tree on Rue de Sanchez Lane, tangled in its branches, something bronze flutters in the wind. Okay, I will find the hawthorn tree, Trevor. He Don't stands worry. on stage behind a table, nodding along to the music and waving his hand in the air. In front of him, the audio mixer, one reel spinning. The other reel deck is empty. Cables run hither and thither. On one side, you see an auxiliary line in with the number 4.5 written next to it. Yeah, how do we make this harder core? You know it in your lungs where the pressure should vibrate, in your heart that's alone, and in your solar plexus where the hits should land. It needs more so bass, that's all. What? It needs more bass and a melody. A good melody is what makes the song really stick. You can't get it out of your head anymore. Wow, okay. We should start with the melody. But where would we get that stuff from? I don't know. Do you know? I'm sorry. I don't know anything about the Nordic music. I'm just the party boy. I get the people going and say it's hardcore. <laughs> yeah, let's take the task. The young man falls silent with appreciation. He even tries to contain his smile, as if it could hinder 
your investigation. Basically, what you need to find here is a tape with some banging music on it, so that Egghead could use it to remix Van H's jam. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Maybe that street talker across the pawn shop has got some tapes to sell. That's just an idea. There is a hawthorn tree on Rue de Songe's lane, right next to the canal. A reel of magnetic tape is caught in its branches, like bronze ribbons blowing in the wind. Hmm. Oh, I know! I know this! I can tell you where it is! Where? St. G is the boulevard before the canal bridge. The one that takes you to the whirling in rags and the industrial harbour. It's got the lanterns and the... I knew that! I could have said that! And the mosaic sidewalk. But it's all blocked with that stupid traffic jam right now. Anyway... Does it? Anyway, that's all yours to figure out, Copman. Copman! <laughs> Alright. I uh, would what, what about you? You got us in, Cop. I can't believe you got us in. Between you and me, I don't know if you've noticed this about me. I'm a little suspicious of authority. You, you really came through for the hardcore underground. You know it. Yes, you really came through for the hardcore underground. How come? Andre is busy cutting some slightly less lame, but still quite ungainly shapes on the church floor, sweating profusely. A cell using her contact mic to listen to a tree underwater. The one with the large head is blasting the dance track on repeat, while the stained glass window behind him is rattling from the base. Sire, the tent, twas a security risk, and in here, sanctuary. It was hmm. only noble of you. I am a noble being. Right here than a tent. It wasn't safe out there. Okay. What he means is, you're right, actually. The tent was a safety hazard, and this place was deserted anyway. So why are you, why are you so suspicious, Noid? Suspicious people are esoteric people. We don't go around spilling everything to Johnny Law. They don't call me Noid for nothing. It took us setting out for this whole enterprise to get our signs synced. Why are you called Noid? It's short for Paranoid. Huh. Good call. Not exposing yourself to stuff like that. What's with the clothes? They're hardcore. Oh. It's just a style, you know. Fair enough. It's a miracle of carpentry. Their bodies carved into total shapes. Now it can be something more. Dead bodies? Dead bodies are perennial plants. Sigma functions have left this place. It's a good thing we came along. The spiritual collapse has been total. Spiritual collapse? I saw some piglets suckling their dead mother. Have you heard this one, cop man? After a short while, they shuddered and went away. They had sensed that she could no longer see them and that she wasn't like them anymore. What they loved in their mother weren't her body, but whatever it was that made her body live. End of quote. This is an high quality carcass. The power of a nodic beats and hard base is needed to reanimate it. You're saying you're not a big fan of the innocentics. What is, I don't even know what that is. A 3,000 year old tyrannical regime of history. Built and maintained by hundreds of generations of self appointed intellectuals. It's false core. The way he says it, the force in false core is invested with 20 kilotons of disgust. So you should replace religion with dance music. Oh, hey, Kuma. Dance music. Regular dance music wasn't hard enough. And yes, I do. Interesting. You know what this kind of stuff goes well with. Yeah, I'll need to be in there. Your pleasure response was more like just wondering if he has any. Sure. Well, thank you for stopping by, Kuma. She's whistling a melody. Her trusty contact mic 
attached to a wooden pulpit. At the sound of your footsteps, she stops what she was doing and turns to you. Hey there. I've been recording some new audio from all these beams and rafters. The sounds traveling through the wood are pretty cool. Creaks and stuff. Like you're underwater, you know? What but like, is... underwater inside a tree. I feel like her audio sounds lower quality than everyone else's. But that's not really what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to thank you instead. What for? For getting me and my friends in here. And we even found some new associates, such as they are. So how's everyone doing? Good, I think. Lloyd is getting a read on the place. I think he finds the carpentry very impressive. Andre's been setting up the compressor and dancing. Egghead's been keeping the party up. He's got the stage under control. Sauna, the programmer. She's doing whatever she does behind that radio computer of hers. She doesn't talk to us much. And the crab man hasn't shown himself, thank God. Have you seen a red-haired woman? No. Just no? It's pretty desolate here. I only hear the dogs bark at night and see the shadows move down the coast. Yeah, that's good. No neighbors. Exactly. It's our chance to turn the grim desolation into an overwhelmingly fun dance party. Now tell me about your associates. Sure. You helped us out. I can repay the favor. What do you think of the crab what do you man? Want to know? Oh, the crab man. Still gives me the creeps the way he moves. But he doesn't actually come down that much, just climbs around the rafters. I just tried to stay away from the crab man. But he talks to Noid. They seem to have some thing going on. Really? Beats me. Noid said they get along somehow. They're both crazy enough, I guess. What does he do up there? Who knows? He doesn't really answer our questions, see? Not that it's easy to ask them. What are we supposed to do? Yell up at the tower? Who do you want to know about? I guess no one. Sure. It's okay. We're getting this task done. Find a tape. We have to... Okay, let's go back to Kim's car. Hey, I did this. Why isn't this marked off? Oh, do I need to talk to Andre? Can you already imagine a thousand people in here? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. Ecstatic vibrations, totally transcendent. And I've finished setting up the new compressor too. Now the only thing left to do is the name of the club. Will you do the honors, detective? Oh jeez. Yeah, I'll come up with the name. You have? Well, what's the name? Disco Elysium. Like that DeLorean word for the world, you mean? Elysium. Yeah. But Disco Elysium? Isn't it wacky? Disco's kind of gone, isn't it? Forgotten. Like this church, right? The past is the future, but the future is dead. Yeah. No, it's beautiful. Beautiful and brave. Like we want it to be. And short. And memorable. It's settled then. Everyone welcome to Disco Elysium. Nice. The wind brings some snow in from the broken gallery. It wraps you in its embrace, cold and luminous. You should return to the mural soon. To the one that said, tomorrow is just a wandry breaks that into mural now. frenzied dance-like motion to celebrate the name. That's not Someone dancing. turns up the beat. I'm dancing! Interesting. That soft core gyrating is supposed to be dancing. Let's talk about your dancing, my man. Yes, my man. Talk? What is there to talk about if you can express yourself with moves? True. Audio waves thump against your rib cage. The speaker setup makes everything sound much better. But there's a noticeable lack of something. Oh, 
Yeah, what's with your hair, dude? It's to express my individuality. Is that a bald spot? It's hard to tell for sure with the fused together spikes, but it looks like he's balding. Fair enough. Maybe it was a bad idea. Anyway, goodbye, officer. Yeah, we have to get back to Kim's car. No, no, we have to go talk to the mural. I'm going to be sad that we won't be in the dance music anymore. Like, I know it's just a really short loop on repeat, but... Winter. Slow to let go of Rivershaw. Flex some more wet snow from above. The snow falls lazily, making the beach sand paler still, mixing with the rust-colored sewage runoff. It has been a cold year. All things waiting for spring will have to wait a bit longer. Interesting. Looking up at the sky, melted snow dripping from your hat. What do I see? The sky is full of great battleships. White clouds collide with one another, and the world is drenched with their debris. The melting snow seeps through your thin clothes. Grandmothers don't let their grandchildren out dress so lightly in this weather. At least your hair is protected from getting wet and sticking together. Where's Ruby? You look near. Snow falls into dark water. She prays, though she doesn't believe. There is a hum in the air. That's all. What's below me? Layer upon layer of sand. Poisoned with industrial runoff, the storm drainage, hidden bunkers, rats scuttle. What's the secret of the sands, wind? Someone stuffed a big old polar anorak into a concrete pipe under the boardwalk. It would keep you warm. You would probably never happen across it, but who knows? A concrete pipe under the boardwalk. More winding coastlines lined with abandoned buildings, crumbling piers, salt water lapping at their dark piles, gray and red forgotten city blocks, what remains of the pre-revolutionary effort to gentrify the coast. The waters turn black, coal city in the shadow of San Martin, a boom town, back when coal extracted from countless shafts near the city was needed to power Revachon. No more. The coal was supplanted by petroleum from the ocean floor and hydropower from the Esperance. Everything crumbled. These days, only the weakest remain in Coal City. Below the old mines, Losser Municipal, Revachal's underground cemetery. La Petite Ra braved the underground passageways, trying to get to Le Royam, where the Philippian kings were interred oh, okay. with their doctors and their admirals. Children under 14, they go underground looking for artifacts to sell to foreign museums and for fabled relics. Their parents let them. They go deeper. Deeper? After rubies, melchiorite, lapis lazuli, plundered from Safre and Seo during the time of the suzerain. In the burial chambers of the kings, Grand Old Philip, Guillaume II, and even in the mausoleum of Philip the Opulent. Two kilometers underground, in a winding shaft I feel like this along is helpful. whose walls mirrors have been placed so that daylight may eternally fall upon the richest of all the kings. The mausoleum contains untold quantities of gold and that special, purest of the pure magenta cocaine, favored magenta by Revacholian royalty. Did someone say untold quantities of cocaine? Drop everything immediately and go looking for this hoard. No. How can it be pure if it's magenta? That's true. Snow falls and there is no answer. Some things are not for mortals to know. Okay. Few Petira return from the shafts. Even fewer find what they're looking for. A small child steps out of the black tunnel with silver trinkets in her pockets. All around her, white snow on the extinguished coke furnaces uh, yeah, I don't feel like that helps and on the weather-worn shacks what's east the canal you crossed to get here and beyond it someone is scraping snow off their windshield at the roundabout in the midst of which a statue of philip the third sir 
like all monuments, it's also a warning. A fenced off yard, there's a truck belonging to a logistics company parked next to the gate. Clean white light coming from the windows mm. of a clean Q-shaped office building hidden amidst ruins. A secret. A secret? A fenced off yard a truck belonged to a logistics company parked next to the gate. Cube shaped office in the ruins. An abandoned church that's being turned into a a serpentine strip of land weaving its way into the Martinez Inlet. Unfortunates on the run from the law, from themselves. The remains of a camp on a jagged piece of rock, a tent, old dishes and cutlery, long since abandoned. A hermit crab scuttles among the debris, looking for a new shell. Further out, the light What's on the other side? There's Ozon, but the snow falls too thick. You cannot see that far. The Bay of Revachon. Vastness, great depth, over 1,200 meters. And at the farthest reaches of the Bay of Revachon, the shadow of the coalition warship, Archer, on oh, perpetual okay. patrol duty, ready to... The raised motorway, 881, with vehicles wishing... Was once a park, a place for reflect... The pox is... Com heavy drug users do... A line of motor garages with armored character around you. The snow continues to fall to the west. Okay. A chill. Let's get out of here. We should keep moving. Who knows when the snow will let up? I mean, actually, it looks like the snow mostly did let up. Let's go look at the mural again. Oh, we have so many points. Let's put more into shivers. The once bright mural tells oh, we can above do you saying, Feld Electrical R and D. Tomorrow is just suddenly there's a sigh carried on the molecules around you, moving flowing from high pressure to low pressure, like that of a woman emptying her lungs. She wraps the collapsing stone box in front of you in her breath, flowing through it. Where? In through the collapsed roof, flowing down a concrete staircase to the basement, sweeping away footprints in the dust on the stairs, and then the beach below the boardwalk, its winding tunnels, a whisper away. What? She's down there. I think she's down there. Okay. Why? The wind told me. So, how do we get in there? The doors were on the collapsed side of this building. They're gone, basically. Finally, my time to shine. There's a ladder next to the sun. Perhaps you can climb them. We are not climbing anything. I'm 43 years old, and I plan to live to see 70. Mm, you're no fun, Kim. There has to be a way to use brute force. Climbing sounds unsafe. Brute force is safe. Look around and find something to break if the ladder fails. There's also still a question of how the twins tuned into Speedfreaks FM. Okay, it's we'll look into that first. Detective. If you drop the radio lead now, just be prepared to leave without having done it. Well, well, well after saying that, we can't. Okay, Ken, you win. We won't drop it. I like that the game warns me. We can go look for that hawthorn tree while we're down there.
Yeah, hey, do you have any banging tapes? Everything still cool here, officer. You saw any tapes? Tapes? You mean like music tapes? No, music is out. Don't listen to music. I sell extremely cool sunglasses. If you want to get your mojo going. Yeah, yeah. Tapes? Tapes are everywhere. They're worthless. Kids throw them in the trees. There's one in the bushes right behind this lorry. No one would ever throw a good pair of high quality plastic sunglasses in the bushes, mister. I would. To the west, dark brown ribbons of tape hang from the tree. You should have a look. It's better than nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's look. The hawthorn tree on Rue de Songe's lane. Bronze colored ribbons of magnetic tape are caught in its branches, fluttering in the breeze. That looks like a pain in the ass trying and roll back onto a reel. Just like promised, you've stood here for what seems like eons, guzzling the sickly fumes of lorries and carriages. Good Hawthorne. Patting the tree reveals a small sticker which has almost been worn to oblivion. It reads, RCM Emergencies Desk, number 8102. Underneath a slogan, Mankind Be Vigilant. You tree-hugging pansy. <laughs> the bronze ribbon twists around and within the branches in an intricately natural pattern. But what? there's something. What do I see? There's a twisted logic in this mess. You see the ends of the ribbon, the way it flows, how it twists and turns. It's all starting to make sense. If It'll you, be if easier you say to so. remove now. With slow and deliberate motions, pulling, Bending and unraveling, you manage to extricate the magnetic tape from the branches. Thank it you. curls up into a mess inside your pocket. If only you could find a way to re-spool it, so that you could hear what's on the tape. Maybe Roy from the pawn shop can help you with this. Sure. What is the tape for? It's for again. How? It's broken and unspooled. Do you think your new buddy knows how to fix it? He has to. All right. You could also get it fixed at the pawn shop across the street. We shouldn't waste our time. True, you true, know, true. since tape spinning isn't really our day job, solving murder investigations is. What if they're related? Good idea. He might have the tools. The tape projector in the pawn shop uses similar tape. Let's look in the sewer. Hot air from the sewer. It's getting late in the day, we won't be able to do a whole lot else. Hello. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Do you know how to fix this? You mean raise poly? Yeah, I do, but... Can you? But I'm not some Mr. Fix-It. I'm a pawnbroker. If you want to pawn the tape, sure. Although it looks pretty... worthless. Yeah, it's not worthless. Huh? What do you mean? You know, that old church down the coast? Yes. What about it? We're turning to a nightclub. Is it any good? The music, I mean. The beat's too thin. Man, you're really invested in this. Okay, I'll help you out. It's going to oh, take yes. a moment. Oh though. no, it's going to take so time. Just sit back and relax. Why can't you I just come back and pick it up? To look around the store. The oh, of we lost like almost a half hour. Is mesmerizing. Suddenly, Roy turns back to you with a reel of tape in his hand and coughs. You know, these visuals would look super cool in the church. Oh, they would. Yeah, I bet they would. All those lights in a massive church hall. 
a sanctuary filled with hand-picked positive photons. There would be no room for sadness in such a place. It's a brilliant vision. We could make this come true, man. Yeah, man. No. No. I'd rather like this place happy too. You know, where I work. This tape is all I can do for Damn you and it. your friend's nightclub project. There's no way to turn this around, I'm afraid. That's fine. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. I'll do what I can for true passion project. Just try not to use this tape for negative photon emissions. Take responsibility. Okay. Do you have any radios? A transceiver, is it? Yeah, we should have something to do the trick. He produces a machine encased in a blue bake light shell. Its black face covered in an assortment of pearl topped knobs and dials. The lieutenant whistles a long, quivering note. A genuine crystal sprach. This is a connoisseur's model, good for picking oh. up foreign milieus. The Model 9 also comes equipped with a signal purifier to suppress crosstalk. Especially good around here with our funky reception. Interesting. In other words, it will put even the lieutenant's beloved Dino Wave to shame. Sounds perfect. It's about as close to perfection oh as my a God, transceiver game. And we're only asking a hundred and twenty real for it. Mm, I'm You'll dead. be back again. I've got a feeling. Maybe. That is ludicrous. No way that we're spending that much. Hey, you spooled up the tape for us for free. It only cost us 15 minutes, so that's good. Let's go call up Speed Freaks FM. And we'll head back uh, to the mural. Oh, these guys are still here. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. A this is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Yeah, I need you to connect me to uh, Speed Freaks FM. Come again, officer. Uh, Speed Freaks FM. It's a radio station. Okay, officer. One moment. I have the GMS on the line. I'll connect you now. Yo! The starting gun fires, and we're off. Hello, is this DJ Mesh? It is. I got a few minutes before I gotta go back on air. What can I do for you, cop man? Yeah, did you debut a new track from DJ Flacchio uh, a few days ago? Flacchio? Flacchio? I don't know. An asshole is a mouth of shit. Mm, and I'm puking. <laughs> I'm puking. That's the name of the song. Vulgarity is La Belle de Jour. Great title, man. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's the shit hot new single from DJ Fellatio, really shedding Felicia. up the sonic waves. That's not... Okay, we'll just pretend that it's pronounced Fellatio. Fellatio. Okay, Fellatio. Uh, do people like it? Yeah, how could some kids hear in their heads? Oh, is that what this is about? Listen. It's not our problem if kids decide to tune into R R R R River Shaw's hottest station. Yeah, but they heard in their heads. I don't understand. Are you asking if we can, like, um, play our station into people's brains? Yeah, maybe. We ain't testing anything out for the man, unless it's how many bricks you need to break all his windows. That wasn't a fret, by the way. Just a figure of speech. Mm -hmm. I'm a spoken word guy. Now, is there anything else you needed? Yeah, I give a shout out to Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. Huh? Look at that. His eyes dilate. That's joy, my man. You wouldn't be able to tell, but his glasses just magnify it. Okay, cop man. Can do, will do. Sweet. DJ Mesh? Out. The party has terminated the call. Is there anything else I can do for you, officer? I guess not. You should check the radio again. We gotta Let's hear go it. Let's go to the wildest cop in Rivershaw. 
he asked us to give his buddy cop, longtime listener Kim Kitsuragi, a big shout out. Kim, we love you. Nice. Keep it freaky, like DJ Mesh, DJ Flaccio, and your Flaccio. This one's for you. It's not Flaccio, it's Flaccio. See, this, this guy knows how to pronounce his own name. If, when a motor carriage's engine was ignited, it could drive by its own accord off to a high mountain and there write a song, perhaps it'll be something like what you're hearing now. We aren't discussing this. Come on, though. What a reserve of willpower. It's taken all he's got to not smile. This is precinct 57. 57's over and out. I'm gonna cabin, count that you... as making Kim smile. Okay, about that call, let's start from the top. There's no doubt the twins are Speed Freaks FM. I still don't know how without a radio, but they did. Spooky. I don't know what it means. I mean, a weird voice did tell me to talk to the kids. I don't think the voices in your head are related to this, no. It's not like a lady, though. The lieutenant gives you a long look. I don't know what to say to that, or what you want me to say. I'm sorry, did we ask where the kids were when they heard the voice? Nope. We could ask where the kids were when it happened. And, detective, thanks for this. It's been interesting. So we'll talk to the kids again. We'll go make uh, make the beat harder core. The scruffy and we'll go climb the ladder. Kicks a stone while the other watches him do it. Where were you when you heard the voice? There. We were there. I knew it. Uh huh. Bounce back to Fell. Be sure you're ready when we go in. Detective. I'm always ready, Kim. The boy turns the rock over in his hands. Uh, but first, hardcore. Oh, we could have gone back and, uh, while we're on the other side of the canal, talked to um, the cryptozoologist, but we'll have to do that later. Actually, we haven't even listened to this tape on our own yet, have we? What if it isn't hardcore? Oh, uh, so it won't fit in our portable Good player. Good morning! Yeah! Remix time! Tape goes here, into deck B! A hand on his ear. He listens to the audio through his headphones and shouts. Wow! Did you get this from Arno himself? What do you mean? Listen, I'm just going to show it to you. Ready? I'm always ready. Now, if only we had the beat for the full assault, the it full would assault. be unbelievably hyper. What is this? It's good. How did you guys do that? Do what? I just found a random tape and brought a tag head. It is uncanny how well it goes together. Yes, but what if Van Eyck based his remix on some forgotten local melody, uh, like a folk song, and you just found the original piece that inspired him to create this jam? That would explain why it fits so well. Interesting hypothesis. Nah, to me it sounds like classic Van Eyck. I don't think he needs any inspiration from folk songs. Maybe he lives in Martinez and just threw away part of his song because he thought it wasn't good enough? I think it's just happenstance. Chaos in action. Contingencies of our limited existence. That and Egghead's fantastic talent. Noid's right. Egghead's technical talent is the key. Oh. No. 
This is definitely part of the same song. Something cut from it. Hmm. It fits too well. Do we got the logic or interfacing? Uh, what should we better in? I mean, we're really good, I think, at both, but... Oh, what if it's a local song? Be how it's made! If it fits, it fits! Bring up the volume! What about the bass? Do you have any ideas for that? Yeah, I remember. You said it needs more bass. I think you might know the answer. The crazy sound. Oh! Oh! But how? What about that compressor Andre was setting up? To achieve some sort of parallel processing. Don't be too hard on yourself if you don't figure it out. I think the jam is already pretty ultra. We want it hyper though. But it could be hyper, hyper hardcore. Uh, let's get our interfacing up. Interfacing, where are you? Yeah. Good morning! Yeah! Harder car! Oh, hey, Tefo! How did the stream go? A good dog. Let me get interfacing up. Oh, what the heck do I have? So you guys uh, came here from The Sims? These clubs. I think that's as good as we're going to get. We just have to 58%. Thank you, Tapo. Goes the track in the background, never ending. You can't grasp what's missing, but you can try to make something up anyway. Well, how did we fail? The young man bobs his head. No. Let's increase our interface again and try again. We're running on skill points, though. Good night! Yeah! Side chain the beat. What does that mean? Listen, you can use the compressor to select between which track it's compressing, either the auxiliary signal or the main input from the tape. Make it alternate between the signals. The compressor controls the gain based on the level of the signal on the aux side chain input. It will allow maintaining a loud sound without peaks that fill up all the headspace. Sure. Try whatever that it means. Side chaining it, you said. Then he puts on his headphones and his eyes go wide, wider than they've ever gone on drugs. <laughs> he starts jumping up and down with bliss in total silence, still listening to his headphones. Hey, what did you do to Egghead Cop Man? Did you break him? Let's wait and see. Are you ready, Pussy? Yeah, I'm ready. Noid straightens his back, ready for the beat. I was born ready, Egg. Already. Oh, so loud. Where'd they get all these laser lights? stage intensely waving his hand in the air this yes. is beauty this is life oh when we level up new skill point what in the world is going on the way melody and bass flow together it's unnatural we have tamed the sound made it our own god damn it 
this dance club idea might just work out. Yeah, way better than a drug lab. DeLorean Church! The place to be! Pump it! Pump it! This is it. This is a new era. The fabric of the world has been irrevocably has altered. Sure. Cold wind. Okay. Yeah, it's cold out. Let's hurry. I walk outside and save. I'm gonna find a way up. Um, I guess we're gonna climb a ladder. Try and do that without dying. Save. Save. Where, where am I going? Yeah, up here. Put the pieces together. Oh, what's this? Concrete pipe. An old pipe peeks out from beneath the rotten boards of the boardwalk. Could this be an alternative path into the fell building? A building like it. this must have multiple doors serving various functions. Perhaps a basement access. Oh, this might be better than the ladder. Let's take a peek. Your eyes slowly begin to adjust to the darkness inside the drainage pipe. The lieutenant looks over your shoulder. Uh, what's in? An ordinary drainage pipe. Darkness. I need to equip a flashlight. As your eyes adjust, you see some trash. Crumpled up newspapers. Cigarette butts. Someone has half-heartedly spray-painted skulls on the right side. And? And nothing. And nothing. Broken glass from bottles thrown against the walls of the pipe. Okay, that's a that's syringe. Skin. Given that this isn't a martial arts thriller, it's highly unlikely, and not without risk. Oh yeah, there's syringes consider. in there. Let's However, not. the pipe suggests there may be an entrance to the basement around. He means the pipe must be coming from somewhere in the building. And it's right here, a maintenance door. Oh, right where? It's jammed shut. The subtle approach isn't going to work on this one. Oh yeah, big boy time. This needs you to put your back into it. I can't. I'm too weak. What if we equip a pry bar? No, no, we already have the massive pry bar. Um, hmm. Oh, why am I wearing this shirt? Put our armor back on. I'm gonna climb the ladder. Screw it. I don't know where that door is supposed to be that Tim found. A rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. Some of the rungs are missing. We can do this. Yeah, that doesn't look good at all. Assess. The distances between the remaining rungs are rather wide. You'd have to use the mounting brackets. However, they seem corroded and the peeling rust is razor sharp. Well, we can try In addition. The first rung is going to be tough to reach. It's what, three meters above the ground? And you're 180? I mean, it looks like I could reach it. I could sit on that bench. Um. I'm 190. Okay, but still, the roof is collapsing and the wind gets pretty brutal up there. Dismounting from the ladder is going to be hard. Perhaps if you were to not climb the ladder. I think either way instead, it's going to hard. What if you were to reconceptualize climbing the ladder? What if I don't climb? What if I just teleport? Teleportation is not a thing. <laughs> Come on, Kim. Where's your adventurous spirit? 
This really has nothing to do with adventure. We are dealing with basic physics here. Won't hurt to try. Oh yes, it could hurt a lot. Subtle fair. We can get that up higher. Um, I know I have something that gives me a bonus set. I need to get rid of some of these garbage items though. It takes too long whenever I'm trying to look for something. Was it these shoes? No, it was giving me a minus. So okay, we found some fancy shades. And that's uh, that's all I've got. The rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. Teleport. All you need to do is close your eyes and concentrate. Darkness enfolds you. You can I'm feel going to the distance between the bench and the first rung of the ladder. Do it. Zoot, zap, pow, crinkle. It's like magic. You feel yourself disappear. Your atoms fading out of existence. Oh my god, I can't believe it. <laughs> he just teleported. <laughs> Bam! You find yourself what? on the roof, having mastered the art of physical displacement. I did it, Kim. I teleported. I just saw you climb the ladder. You just climbed it like a regular person. <laughs> Okay. The wind at the top of the building starts howling loudly, blowing away the lieutenant's voice. Faintly, you hear. Never mind. Find a way to let me in when you get inside. Sure. Ah, don't go adventuring with a backup, especially if we think the suspect may be hiding here. Oh my goodness. Let's look at this piece of metal. Looks a bit dangerous. No, oh, come on. Up face. You just climbed it like a regular person. Man. We're thoroughly insane. No, this is, it goes even deeper. A note? No, it's just a postcard. Um, you don't see a way to let Kim in on this level. Maybe we can open that maintenance door that he had seen. You. Thank you, game. I should take out my flashlight. <sighs> I found like seeing. Uh, no, 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 don't go back up. Oh, there's skin. Two rusty metal plates that slide apart form a crude door. It's been here under the boardwalk for a while. Who's there? What do you mean, who's there? It's me, Kim. Stop playing around and help me get the door open. Okay, okay. The doors seem to be on rails, but they've gotten jammed. You grab a side and put some strength into prying it open. With the help of your partner, the two metal panels slide open with a creak. Huh. I hope no one dangerous heard that. You ready? Yes. Time to investigate these passages. Whoa. Let's move quietly and not make okay. more sound. Not running is a great way to do that. Oh, we actually have to be quiet? I'm not good at being quiet. Okay, we will slowly walk. I feel like I should not have my flashlight on if we're trying to be stealthy. Through with mold. I will look here first. A coat that we don't want. Found a 
garbage coat can. A crevice. Okay, we will take a look at the crevice later. What's that here? Okay, so that looks like the way to go. Let's look in the crevice first, actually. Can we slide on in? No one's slept in here for months. Maybe years. Okay, we got a communist hat. Could this have been the killer's hideout? And this narrow window, the point of origin of the shot that killed the mercenary? Could it have? This does look like an embrasure, a slit made for shooting out of. Let's take a peek. Outside the window, the day is clear, and as mild as can be in early spring. What do you think, Kim? It's a great place to hide, certainly. But there hasn't been anyone here in ages. Oh, and it definitely didn't come from here. I can't even... Indeed. Why don't I even ask you? No one could get a clear view. Well, at least we've been thorough. I like thorough. I like thorough. <laughs> okay, so this, I guess, was the boardwalk that we had to try. So the shot came from that island that we don't know how to get to yet. I'm guessing that will be our next... Port of call. Is this a dialogue bubble? Can I talk to this? A mustachioed and mutton chopped man, amateurishly depicted, gazes at you with sad eyes. A plaque reads K. Mazov. There is a spider web in the lower left corner of the portrait. Yeah, I'll brush the dust off. Years worth of dust is shaken off. The full head of hair matched by an ample mustache and sideburns look a bit silly. Someone crouches, heels digging into wet sand. Hands sweep across the sand, grain sticking to the frayed skin of the fingertips. An old man sits on a slab of concrete An and taps his fingers against the glass of a scope. You shudder. Okay. Is there someone aiming down a scope? Somewhere. On the beach? In here? Or on the island? I wish our inner voices could be a little bit more specific sometimes. Yeah, I know we're supposed to go that way, so I'm looking down here first. Oh. Alright, that was a short excursion to the left. Again, like a swarm of hornets buzzing under your scalp. A strange tingling you can almost smell. Kim, you have uh, the heebie jeebies? No. What do you mean? That strange tingling. I don't feel it, but we should still be careful. There were footprints back there, and I'm pretty sure they were fresh. Yeah, I saw them. Looks like our suspect. If she isn't here, we need to plan our next step carefully. Once we detain a credible suspect, who knows what the Union and the Wild Pines will do. We'll set in motion events we have no control Oh, is this about. like a point of no return? It will upset the balance of power in Martinez. The deadlock between the company and the Union will destabilize. Crap. So this will trigger, like, the end game, I'm guessing. This part of town is a fine clockwork puzzle. Disturb its peace, and it will start breaking down uncontrollably. Keep calm. Go over the whole situation in detail. Um, okay, we did find out for plan. I leave that to your judgment. You already know what I think about cross-pollinating information like this. It's dangerous, but... Mm. He just can't be sure. 
Maybe it will yield something useful. What about cryptozoology? You mean Morel? I don't see how cryptozoology and the murder investigation are connected. But the situation in the city will get tense for everyone. If it gets that tense, the amateur zoologists might not be able to do their job. If you want to do that, then yes. We'd be advised to finish every lead. Oh, I don't think we'll have the chance to after... Well, we are not responsible for what we can't predict, are we? I don't think the entire city... What do we do? What do we ground. do? If you can't predict it, there's nothing you could have done. I think I see a cavern. Maybe more cellars? I think we've been careful enough. We still have the element of surprise. I wouldn't be so sure. You haven't exactly been sneaking. I was a little bit sneaking. Or maybe not. Either way, once we go deeper, there will be no turning back. Okay, we save again. Uh, I think we can save over... No, no, let's just save a new slot for the hell of it. So what quests would we be missing out on? Okay, I want to do this stuff. Maybe we shouldn't go in here yet. Okay, Kim, we'll, we'll come back another day. This is the whole reason that we're here. This is our job, but... You have side quests, man. I can't, uh... can't fail my side quests. You want to come here tomorrow? I hope. Where did this lead? Okay, there's the pipe. <sighs> Crap. I think between Joyce and the harbor, I'd rather help Joyce. Maybe we'll go tell her Everett's plans. We I mean, get a, res a transceiver. We'll try and take one out of a radio computer in the doomed commercial area. Okay, Union and cryptozoology business might end. Oh, so only Union and cryptozoology? So maybe I could still do other things then. Okay. How do I, um, put the pieces together at the Feld Mural? And we came to the Feld Mural. I can't even look at it anymore. Hello again. Wait, what is that? Oh, that's the door that we, uh... And we still. We still don't know how to get to that little island. Let's go talk to Joyce. I don't need to find a flashlight in everyone's eyes. Easy to just say. Helped him turn up the heat on the borscht. Sure. Did you now? What sort of borscht is he making? He keeps the strikers drunk. The strike brew. That's a classic. And by turn up the heat, I presume you mean put more alcohol in it? No, I turned down the heat. Beyond curious. I will choose to interpret that as you turning the alcohol in the strike brew down for the sake of our professional relationship. And because I don't like the idea of them any more drunk than they already are, what else? He asked me to... 
I don't know, I'm not gonna say anything like that. To deliver an envelope. Yeah, it's a takeover. A takeover? It's not a strike, it's a takeover. If they're taking it... Green livery, changing into red, blot by blot. What do you think of that? Like a cancer of the blood, metastasizing. Ew. Then we're talking about a war. Evrat needs to let me into the harbor at once. We need to talk about this. He's ready for a war. They most certainly are not. Crenell has a thousand men on their payroll. The next batch will be a platoon of 20 men and a gunship. Well, they've got like tens of thousands of dudes, Everett says. I've seen the Union's forces. They are better organized than these mercenaries. They also have the support of the people of Relashol West. Yeah. It will take more than Crenell to wipe them out. Wild Pines will need to send more and better equipped men. Make no mistake. Yeah, this will be man. bloody and costly for everyone. I am sure you have the money. The question is, how many years and how many lives are you willing to sacrifice? As many as it takes. What do you suggest I do? Time to commence the gloaming. Yeah, I wish there was a disco option. I'm afraid we won't disco our way out of this one. Ah, oh, boy. I don't think it is a bluff. I'm not going to suggest that they assassinate anyone. Yeah, it's not the RCM's job. Of course. Your job is to clean up after them. And it looks like there will be a lot of cleaning to be done in the near future. Yeah, the question for you is what are you going to do? What will I do? Her arms fall to her sides. Her spine relaxes. Did I ever tell you how they discovered this Isola? During our reality lowdown? You said you would. It may be the only break we've ever caught as a species. The last one for 400 years. Why? The nations who colonized this Isola called theirs Muindi, the world. It was all they knew, all they thought would be. That there would be something more was a gamble, akin to another world, or life after death. The Pale was thought to be impregnable, perpetual. Irene la Navigateur, the Queen of Siren, sent eight expeditions, one after the other, into the mass at the edge of the world. Five of the crews did not return. Two did, but had lost their minds. Did they turn to crab men? Each of those expeditions would have been led by an admiral. Sounds like a purge. Like she was purging her political rivals. Sounds political. There was no precedent for such an undertaking. People thought she was punishing the admirals, or had gone mad, or both. Until after years of trial and error, and the development of a strict psychological regime imitating the creation process of poetry. Call Volta Doma, or return from the sea. The eighth expedition returned sane and intact. They told of a new continent of matter. They told the queen and her counselor, Dolores Day, that the pale had begun to condense day after day, hour after hour, minute after minute, slowly raining down until it formed a vast ocean the air is cold and scented with petrichor. What is petrichor? There are rain circles on water all around. Humidity crawls up your back like a piano trill. <laughs> I regret putting so many points into shivers now. It just won't shut up. So does the lieutenant. His mouth is slightly open as he looks to the sky. The droplets feel warm like spring rain. This ocean? The phenomenon has never again been encountered. For a time, the crew thought they were experiencing a hallucination. The mass hand proclaimed, Lancelinde, Lancelinde, the signal to wake up. But they could not. They were sane and conscious, as islands began to appear on the horizon. There are 78,000 uninhabited islands in the Insulindian archipelago, officer. The freckled face of God. You've thought it a million times. 
After life, death. After death, life again. After the world, the pale. After the pale, the world again. A total shift in human comprehension of reality. On the second day, a great skewer was shot down above the flagship Lizargique. The bird was preserved and brought back, along with pollen. Four years later, the Queen's counselor was proclaimed her innocence, Dolores Day, the elected world spirit. The age of humanism, internationalism, and parliamentary rule followed. We were high. And this was the last break we got? The nations of Mundi proceeded to discover five more Isile, or they discovered us, all in the rush of the great inter Islery reconnection. But these others weren't uninhabited. We had to kill people there, wipe out indigenous populations, gunboat economies, or they came to do the same for us, or had done to each other. But here, there was no one but the skewer the Liliat Sea, and the Blood Beach, and the River Esperance. It was the new, new world. The Mondials used it to amass the greatest concentration of wealth mankind has ever seen. Revachol, the Suzerain. What happened? Revolution, poverty, and the mercurial rise of capitalism. Leaving us here. On Caillou, the Pebble. The largest of the fertile, uninhabited islands of the northeast Insulindian archipelago. Four centuries and two revolutions later. But what will you do? I will surrender Terminal B to the Union. Do you have the authority? She puts her hand in the rain. Yes, wild well, plan's going to go down for a with that. second. Go along with it. We will see. Ma'am, this may well unravel property law this side of the river. If that occurs, we may never see the end of this kind of confrontation. The next time there will be two strikes, then four, then a hundred. What happens will happen. The age of capital has only begun. I will talk to my employers in person. We will amputate and cauterize Martinez. If you handle the situation on the ground. Now? Yes, Mr. Clare has a two month head start. I can't let it grow any bigger. And I've exhausted all my options from here. There are no employers. She's a member of the board. Oh. Probably a partner. Oh. You are the Wild Pines. You are the citizens' militia. There are no superiors. Okay. You're wrong, detective. And next time, you should confer with those superiors before you go setting events in motion. Maybe. Events are already in motion. Whether your actions accelerated or momentarily retarded their progress, even the lieutenant cannot really say. Yeah, I answer for my own actions. Here I am. I am the face, and I'm here to answer. Rejoice, Leighton. Okay. Keep the peace, and I will keep my end of the bargain. Um, I'll try. How far along is Cronell's investigation? A confrontation is imminent. They have followed in your footsteps. As your investigation reaches a climax, so does theirs. They are your shadow. Arm yourselves. Armor yourselves. Protect their targets. Violence may be unavoidable, but we can limit the casualties. Okay. That's probably what happens if we go into that cavern. Soon. I do not know precisely. They have cut off all communication, you see. They know I've been feeding you information. One last thing, Lieutenant Dubois. I've given the matter much thought and come to this conclusion. You're not an amnesiac. You're insane. Aren't we all a little bit insane? I know, because I too am insane. I just hide my illness better. And I'm rich. Yeah, isn't everybody a little bit insane? No, detective. No one's as insane as you. Oh. Don't worry, madame. I am very sane. Goodbye, rejoice. Watch out for yourselves. They will strike soon. Oh boy. The lieutenant watches her boat Let's grow see what smaller happens to that. on the bay. Its white sails fluttering. 
With worry in his eyes, he does not know if it was the right thing to do, but he doesn't say anything. You wonder what Everard has to say about this. Slowly, the cells yeah, turn grey to blue as more oxygen gets between you. I mean, Everett should be happy, right? What could what could go wrong? Yeah, the last trap was empty. Let's hurry back. Hopefully Morel's in here with um Gary. Or maybe Gary went home to his racist mug collection. Let's see. Yeah, hey Morel. It's great to see you again, officer. My wife can't wait to thank you. Go on, talk to her. Fine, I'll talk to her first. Oh, sweetie, I don't even know how to thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I'm basically I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. I'm basically also a cryptozoologist now. I knew it. I'm not surprised. It's already getting out of hand. Well, in that case, sweetie, let me give you a small token of my gratitude. A tie. It's a tie, mask in origin. The pin is an antique, quite special to the cryptozoological community. The little silvery knob holding the tie together feels warm in your hand. It's in the shape of an avian Ugh. skull with eight eyes. You could ask her about this when you get the time. It's probably a cryptid, but the phasmid, of course, oh, is yeah, more yeah, important. Yeah. Tell me about the... You, you never told me you saw... The fascinating. Oh, you don't want to hear about some old woman's ramblings. Spill the beans. Ramblings? Nonsense. Your description of the phasmid is the most precise I've ever heard. But darling, I didn't even get the size of it right. Measuring things is important. How did she get the size? How big did you think it was? You were a child, my dear. Really. It's extraordinary what you were able to describe. Now go on. Tell our friend about it. He's proven his interest in the field. Reflexively, the lieutenant read his, his familiar notebook. Well, it was summer. I was building a racing track out of sand on the beach near a tall stand of reeds. Quite a tall one. Many times my height, I remember. When, all of a sudden, I looked up and one of the reeds moved. Not like a plant, but like a living thing. It stood up and looked at me. Its body unfolded like some antique toy. I'd never seen anything like it. The reeds turned into a creature. What sort of creature? I didn't know this can happen, so I reached my arm and touched the thing. It felt just like a stalk of reed, but it moved, swaying, towering above me. After a while, 20 seconds, a minute maybe, it left, went into the reeds. Did you follow it? I tried, but I was only a child. There was mud and high water. I couldn't see it anymore. I was just standing there, knee deep in mud, looking uh, around me. Then what? I ran back home to my grandmother and asked her if reeds could walk and told her they were looking at me. <laughs> of course, she just laughed at me, but... I knew what I'd seen. For years, it was a story I told at parties when I wanted to impress boys. That sort of thing. Of course, most people just took it as a strange, amusing anecdote. So did I, honestly. But then I met Morel. We were on a date. Can you imagine? She tells me a story, and it's the most detailed report of the Insulindian phasmid I've ever heard. The sounds... She told me it hissed. It did, yes. Like reeds in a gust of wind. The way it moved, the color. How some of its limbs were white, like marble. It matched perfectly with what I know from other accounts. It was amazing. If it weren't for Lena, 
I might have given up hope years ago. It's no exaggeration to say that she restored my faith in my profession. So how big was it? It's hard to say how big things are when you're quite small yourself. To me, it seemed to be taller than I was then, but that's probably not the case. What if it is the case? Indeed. Not all of them. There is some white coloration reported, along with beige, where the camouflage ends. What do you think, Kim? I thought it was a wonderful story, man. But I don't believe it. A child left unattended on a warm day. Children make up stories and it's then true. end up believing them. Well, thank you. You're welcome, sweetie. I do appreciate the chance to relive it whenever I get one. It was just... such an impossibly sunshiny day. So warm. Warm? Maybe it doesn't like the cold, and that's why we <laughs> find it tough. Nothing like the gratitude of a good woman. Now then, what can I do for you? I checked all the tracks. Good. Okay. And? One of them was empty. Completely empty? Yeah, nothing. No locusts, no phasmid. No locusts? No phasmid either? That's not ideal, but... There's someone at your campsite. I definitely left that one stocked. Hmm. Right from the campsite? Just means the Inseal Indian Phasmid is even more clever than we thought. Clever girl. She's engaging in a well-known self-deception called motivated reasoning. You hmm. should correct them. Of course, more clever. Yes, the Phantasmodea picked off the locusts and escaped. This is good news, though we'll have to reconsider the design of the traps, make them more secure. Another trip to the reeds. Yeah, I don't know. Some could have just dropped the trap or... Why don't you try convincing Morel his hypothesis is invalid? Thank you for the vote of no confidence, Gary. An officer. I appreciate your concern, but please leave this to the experts. Unless you have an alternative hypothesis you'd like to venture. Actually, no. Excuse me for getting emotional. This is a big deal for us. You've helped us twice now. Okay. And brought some great news too. My gratitude and the gratitude of the Societe Cryptozoologique de Ravachol is yours. Some kind of foul play might be afoot. Theft. Yeah, okay. Thank you, it's an honor. We should probably return to our main investigation here. This has been refreshing, but... Helping cryptozoologists isn't really a priority for our organization, is it? The lieutenant looks out the window, impatiently. Damn it, lieutenant. Have you no intellectual curiosity? Yeah, alternative theory. Consider the way the empty trap was disturbed, as though shaken. Most likely oh, okay. the hands of a young person. Stupid children. Hands small enough to fit inside the trap, too. You should ask the red-headed boy, Kuno. I think a hooligan. A little locus. hooligan? But what would a child want with bags? To eat them. Oh, my dear Morel. You've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment insects almost as much as they love to torment old folks. Now talk to the little gremlin. Delinquents, my favorite. Oh, you've been such a dear to us. Please let us know whatever you turn up. I have a feeling we're getting so close. Hopefully. Well, I see you've got all the help you need. I'll see you tonight at my place. Let's play suzerainty, but no more field trips for me. Fine. After this is your last chance to talk to Gary. Oh. Really, Gary? We're getting somewhere here. I'd love to play suzerain tea, but... Lena, I'm sorry, but you're not getting anywhere. It was some kids. I know the little mutants around here. Leave anything out in the open and they'll steal it, even if it's bugs. Morel, it's been fun, really. But I need a bath and I have deliveries to handle. 
When this tea is done, I gotta run. Okay. No, no. No need to apologize, Geary. You'd be more than helpful. We'll have to take a rain check on that game of Sue's rain tea today, though. We're gonna follow this through. He keeps the language unemotional, but it's in there. Disappointment. Where are you? is this Gary? Always a pleasure to see an officer of the looking. law. I mean, officers. Um. Sure do, officer. His eyes narrow slightly. He's wondering where this is going. Are you a big fan of the man from Yelm, though? How? Ever want to unlock your apartment? Mr. Clare unlocked my apartment? Yeah. So you work for Everard Clare? Officer, please tell him we're good. No, no, tell him I'll make it up to him. Hmm. What have I done? He'll send the muscle after me. After me. As he lowers his tone, he hunches his back. I don't even know what it was about. Whatever it is, tell him I'm silent as the grave. I was probably talking too loud in the whirling the other night about some theories. What kind of theories? I won't do it again. If there's anything I can do to assist you, or the Union. Just ask, okay? I'll try to help if I can. This scared him proper. He's positively melted Ooh. from fear. Has to prop himself up with a lot of anger to keep it together. The weather vein has turned. He cannot be unturned. What? I told you everything. Tis true, sire. Okay, okay. Yeah, what are you guys doing here, so? Again? I can't believe this shit. Yeah. Uh, what do we still have to do? Ask Kuno. I'm gonna have to find a working transceiver. So we'll go talk to Kuno, and then we'll go to the radio computer and I'll try and take out the radio. And if not, I'll have to deal with the crappy radio from um, the office. Though I'm having trouble remembering exactly where that was. Hey, Kuno. Oh. Kuno saw you wield that can. Sweet graffito action, pig. Kuno likes that delinquent shit. Thank you. You're still a dink. Now watch your case with Kuno. I have zero empathy. Did you touch any locusts recently? No. Kuno doesn't give a fuck about bugs. So he knows locusts are bugs. They're not bugs. Oh my god, I told you that shit is lame! Shut up, C. Now they're gonna take you to lame prison! No, no one's lame, just tell me what happened. Deny everything, Kuno! You need to lawyer up! Kuno's not gonna say anything without his lawyer present. No, that girl can be your lawyer. There's definitely something going on here. Remember his pig's head shack? You should check it out. Kuno yeah, I'll check it out. I'll, I'll, I'll try check it out. Let's increase our empathy, though. Sure, two points. Can we do it? Fuck, does Kuno care? No, we can't. Kuno doesn't... Maybe we can do it after we find out his secret from his shack. Back of wonders. Is 
this. All around you, the hisses and chirps of locusts fill the musky air. The earthen floor of the shack has been shaped into mounds of mud dotted with little holes for windows. Like what? skyscrapers, oh, spires that's adorable. of dirt and sand rising. Accommodations for their insectoid inhabitants. So it's not torturing him, he's like keeping well, those pets. Detective, it appears you've solved the case of the locusts. For the missing locust case, which is a subcase of the imaginary insect case. So at least that's going well. Indeed. Yes. I feel we are nearing a real breakthrough. You think the phasmids nearby? If anything, the presence of the locust points to the opposite. The phasmid did not take the bait from the traps. It was Kuno. The phasmid doesn't exist. But what do I know? What Use you your know? powers of deduction. You knew the magic bug was nowhere near here. The phasmid is impairing your judgment. I'll Indeed. let you handle the Kuno side of things. You are doing just fine. Sure, sure, sure. Kuno, tell me about all these insects. You've made a friendly locust city for them. Excuse me. Fuck, does Kuno care? Yeah. Kuno <laughs> took the bugs. So what? You built a whole bug town. It's not bug town. It's the city of locusts. Locusts aren't just bug shit. They come out of the sky like a fucking shadow. Shit descends. Whoa. You stop. It's like their fucking night. Local city. Night city. City of night rage. City. There's a tug of war over the name of his fantastical city. It's almost too big for his I imagination. The girl forces herself to watch again. The corners of her eyes twitching from discomfort. Are you some kind of artist now? Maybe I am. Did he just say I? Oh. Kuno usually calls Kuno. That's Kuno. true. Kuno made Kuno. Kuno says whatever the fuck he wants. There are no rules here, pig. Okay. I fucking say I when I wanna. And Kuno when I wanna. Kuno's free. Kuno's free to fucking die, bitch. This is what he sometimes does when things get tense. Oh my god, Kuno. He's gonna make you totally lame in like three seconds. Oh, don't lame do it. Kuno. Yo, fuck you, see. Kuno can be what Kuno wants to be. Kuno's his own man. Kuno's free. Kuno made himself into Kuno. Kuno can make himself into anything. Kuno can make himself into a pig if he wants. Kuno can make himself into a f Kuno doesn't give a shit. Don't make yourself into a pig, Kuno. You'll have to take me away. Whoa. In it, you hear snow melting, dripping from the eaves. Yeah, not going to take anyone away. Someone the window. Without a word, she disappears entirely behind the fence. For once, the boy is lost for words. He turns completely red now, with splotches of white beginning to appear across his face. You got him. Now convince him to leave the cryptozoologist's traps alone. What does the city of locusts mean? It don't mean anything. It's shit. Kuno just likes to focus. Kuno likes to concentrate on shit. Build shit when he's zipping hard. Fuck, pig. You really shouldn't have fucked with Kuno City. Now it's all fucking lame. I don't give a shit. I don't need the locusts anyway. Shit is all lame now. C was right. The girl's face appears again above the fence, Whoa. just long enough to make eye contact with Kuno. She doesn't know whether to be glad because Kuno is finally convinced of the lameness or more worried because of his continued use of the first person singular. It's going to happen to Kuno, the not Kudo's gonna let the fucking locusts die. 
The fuck are they trying to catch anyway? With the traps? Epsilindian Phasmid. Huh. He recognizes the name. Bitches think Kuno doesn't know shit. The fuck out of here. Kuno's tired of this shit. Aw. Okay, Kuno promised to stop. Let's see if maybe that guild gives us a bonus to our empathy track fuck with him. Does Kuno care? Nope. Kuno doesn't. F That's as far as we're gonna get with empathy. I'm wearing something that decreases my empathy. Is that the case? Yeah. How high can we get our empathy? The hell is this? A terraform tie. Oh yeah, that's way better. Who needs drama? Empathy, empathy. Do I have any clothing? Oh, that makes me more empathetic. Emp empathetic. Nothing else. Let's just try it. Hey, Kuno. I'm gonna figure you out, kid. Kuno care? Such a low percent. What's going on? Nope. Is an ungovernable youth on your crime scene. Like you don't have enough on your plate. You feel a sudden surge of self-pity coming on. Trying to fuck at the Kuno! Trying to fuck at me! <sighs> Try Kuno gonna fuck you! Normal is not what we got here. Yeah, Kuno yeah, 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 yeah. Oh well, we tried. How does someone even have 120 rail at this point? I'm sorry, I'm just still thinking about that radio. Okay, let's talk to the cryptozoologist and then, um, yeah, I don't know. Hello, officer. I think I almost have it. A new trap design, that is. I know you're skeptical. But I have a good feeling about this. Cool. So it was just a child. That's fine. Thank you for telling us, sweetie. This is good news, right? It means we can try again. Yep, tomorrow. She acts chipper. I hope. But something's changed in her tone. A hidden worry. Something is secretly gnawing at her confidence. It's not this Kuno kid or the missing locusts. It's something else. Yeah, you're right. We just need to restock the empty trap. Then we'll need to inspect the whole traps story more like time. completely made up maybe. Then maybe we can. <coughs> he has a 38 degree fever. His resilience has given way. Darling, I told you to take it easy. Oh. You're getting sick. Maybe it's time to go home. You're right, you're right. We can come back next season, when it's warmer. That's just something people tell themselves when they fail. Yeah, I, I can do it. We are getting really carried away with this, aren't we? A little bit. Fine. It's better than having these people get pneumonia on the coast. But after... He wants to see this tale through as much as you. Otherwise, he'd have stopped this already. But he cannot let it drag out after this. That's fine. Really? It's too much, officer. What Morel means is we're grateful for your help. Here's a fresh batch of locusts. They should slide right down the funnel. And thank you what? again. We will definitely mention you, should this lead to a discovery. 
I'm not talking co-discovery, of course, but... Uh... Wow. Co-discovery. You'd be famous. You'd well, show... I think I'm going to save and call it there. Thank you for hanging out with me for a little bit, seeing this weird freaking game. I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, I'll play some more on Thursday. Peace out. I gotta make dinner.